Hi, Graham Roberts here. Welcome to tutorial number six of developing a computer game in Visual C Sharp .NET. Now, here's a game that I've made called Pac-Man. And um, if I just press a key, it should start. The question is, how does one actually know when the Pac-Man icon has connected with the dot to eat it? How does it know that it's eaten it? And how does it avoid the ghost? Well, that's by pressing keys and anticipating where the ghost is. But what I mean is the ghost cannot go through the brick walls, and neither can I. I can't go through that wall there at the top. So these limitations, not being able to go through a wall and being able to eat um, whatever those things are in Pac-Man and finally being caught by the ghost uh oh they're they all examples of what we call collision detection and clearly collision detection is fundamental to games a collision in our game is going to be when an apple collides with the basket which is a happy collision because we get a point. If the apple collides with the floor, now we don't actually have that system up, but we could have put a little picture box, up, well, little long, thin picture box along the bottom, and know that the apple has missed uh, the basket by it hitting this picture box, which is below the basket, and f uh, is figuratively the ground. But we're not doing that in this game, as we've said. So the one we're trying to capture is the collision of an apple with the picture box that represents the basket. There are many ways we could do that. We could do it by um, comparing the middle of the apple with the middle of the picture box and say it collides with it when it meets the middle of the picture box. Or we could say whenever it intersects with any part of the picture box. Now, even if it came there, that would be an intersection. But, of course, our apple's always dropping from top to bottom. So, basically, we ask the question, when does this apple intersect this, or when does this picture box intersect this picture box? The criteria that we wanted for our um, control that held the avatar and the apple was twofold. One, we wanted it to be able to hold an image, which the picture box can, and uh, the other thing we wanted for it really was that it could be used for animation and collision detection. The picture box has something subtle about it, which you won't find by looking through its properties and that is that it is a rectangle and rectangle objects in C sharp have a method called intersects with which detect whether or not one rectangle is over another and it is one of the crucial reasons that I have chosen to use a picture box to represent my avatar and the non-playing characters so let's see that in operation. The um, collision detection needs to take place in either the key handler when the basket is moving, i.e. the basket collides with the apple, or we can detect a collision when the apple collides with the basket. Which one would we choose? We could cho choose either. Now I'm going to actually choose the timer one uh, if, because it's simpler. After all, what we're actually doing in a game is animation and the timer is making animation happen because the user, the player, is obviously making some of the movement but the key to the game is that the apple is falling. If that wasn't the case, it well, wouldn't be the same game. Okay, so let's start coding. We're going to obviously use an if statement. 
and we're going to have a condition. What happens if that condition is true? Well, let's put in our braces. We're not probably interested if it's not true. We don't care if there's no collision in this case. Um, so what we're going to do? Well, we're going to say that the score is incremented by one if there's a collision because the apple has hit, hit the basket. Well, that would do for the moment. We have to reset the apple. So at the moment, we say that the apple is going to the top. So we do that, and we put it back to the top. So that leaves us with the question, what is the condition? Well, the condition is going to be really about the apple, so let's ask that question. PB apple. Now, the apple has got bounds to it. Go back up here. Um, we can find bounds. There it is. That. And we want intersects with. There it is there. With what? Well, funny enough, it's going to be the basket. And we want the bounds of the basket as well. And there we have it. So if the two intersect with each other, then the score is incremented and we reset the apple. Let's see that working out. The timer is uh, whatever it's set to, and obviously the apple is jumping a little bit there every so many intervals, every hundredth of a second. Um, anyway, that's the rate at which the, what the apple is falling, which not quite what we expect from gravity. There's no acceleration, but by the you know, let's ignore that for the moment. Uh, there's it's falling, and when it hits the basket, it jumps back to the top and starts falling again, which is what we wanted to happen. Now, just taking a moment to balance the scale a little bit. I've increased the drop speed to 10, and uh, it's looking a little bit better. You can see the advantage of putting these at the top of the code sheet. Easier to find. Now, at the moment, there's an obvious problem. The apple is always going to hit the basket, so long as the player doesn't move the basket from underneath like so and then of course the score goes down either way the, the apple redrops so what we need to do is to put some randomness into the non-playing character side we need to make it so that the player the child has got some reward for dealing with the unpredictability of the tree and the apple and the wind and so on in terms of our story blowing the apples down or maybe somebody's up the tree throwing the apples down to be caught by the child the picker anyway in the next tutorial we'll be looking into that in the next tutorial in tutorial number seven we'll be looking at how to introduce randomness into our game and how to make that apple drop in a different position or from a different position on the tree as it were each time.